This is my finished Grisaille cast. So I am oiling out my painting right now. Some of the areas have sunken in a bit and those areas look a little matter and not true to what the painting um, actually looks like. So I'm using a mixture of Damar varnish, poppy oil, walnut oil, and a little tiny bit of turpentine. And I'm crunching down so I can see how the light is hitting the painting. So any matte areas, I'm sure to see them and get the oil on them. But I'm trying to use as little oil as possible. So I'll take a paper towel and rub over the surface just to make sure I'm getting um, any excess oil off. And the big takeaways from this one was ma maintaining the surface area. In my last cast painting, I was really uh, interested with playing with textures, but that really, really got in the way especially with showing the value structure. So when I was working on this painting, I made sure to keep everything super smooth for the surface. So I was applying a little bit more medium so the paint wasn't too dry or scratchy or showing, um, not showing like the texture of the bristles from the brush strokes. And so keeping that really smooth surface on it really helped me to get really subtle transitions that you can see are all over the cast. Another thing that I really learned with this painting was where I should be expressing detail and where I should be letting the detail fall away. The focal point of this painting is the brightest area. So we've got the forehead and the hair. And when I first painted that, um, especially in the hair, as you can see in the cast, there's uh, a lot of different grooves in the planes that make up the different shapes in the hair. And so I expressed it with all that detail, but showing detail, you have to put in a lot of contrast and all those contrast was making it like really distracting and not making it look so bright, as bright as it is in nature. So I kept repainting the hair and really just focusing on the really big planes and making that the priority over the little details that were on it. And I was pretty surprised by, it still looks like there's detail and you can see the grooves and the texture of the hair, but by expressing the values really close together instead of um, showing the detail by showing a lot of contrast in those values, it made it look a lot brighter and a lot more true to nature. And I'm also pretty happy with how I'm expressing space around the cast. Um, I'm getting really excited and interested in trying not to just paint the cast or your subject and the background, but also paint the air that's around it and in front of it. And I feel like if you can paint the air, it's painting the atmosphere. And it's a lot more like how we view life anyway and I think that's a lot more naturalistic so um, it's kind of a confusing thing and I'm still trying to figure it out but I feel like I'm getting more in the direction that I want to go with this painting um, and I'm expressing the air and the atmosphere with temperature shifts and also edge quality and I also want to show you my setup I spent a lot of time on this one working on the light design and I have different cardboards and black foam board taped up and stringed up. Um, it's really all manipulating the light that's falling from a skylight. And it takes a lot of playing around to get it how you want it, but you can definitely get different moods with the lighting effect. And so I have her face that's in kind of half shadow, which I think is really interesting and it kind of um, adds a little bit of mystery to the piece, which I think is really interesting. And also not just the light that is hitting the subject itself, but the light that's falling around it. So I have this beam of light that comes down and it kind of like washes around behind her, which I think is really interesting. And then you can even do more smaller detail work with light manipulation. Like I have these, um, for example, these little pieces of cardboard that are jetting out. And those are there to really soften edges. So I want all of the attention to be on the top of her head. And so the base that's coming down, especially where it comes to a point, that was a really, really sharp, bright point and it was kind of distracting. So that piece of cardboard up there um, softens that edge just to make sure that the focus stays up in the face and the top of the head rather than at the bottom. And Matt just let me know that this is gonna be my last Grisaille cast and I'm moving on to a limited palette, meaning that um, my palette is now gonna have yellow ochre and cadmium red light, which I'm so excited to start playing around with color. And so here's the time lapse of it in progress.